Hey good people, it is Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with my video all about my most and least used items in the year of our Lord AD 2022 in the year of 2022. Now I thought about narrowing this down to just luxury purchases or narrowing it down to just things that I bought during the year. But what I realized is that my whole goal on this channel is to talk about how it's important for us to consume consciously and to also shop with intention. So my goal honestly is to show you the same items year to year, right? Because somebody's new. <laughs> it will be someone's first time seeing it. On top of the fact that obviously I want to be able to report to you all the cost per wear of anything that I purchase, not just luxury pieces. And so from that perspective, today's video will be pretty comprehensive. I got items across category, some lifestyle, self-care items, obviously clothes, shoes. I really want to focus on jewelry, for example, since it's a big part of how I just adorn myself, okay? Sometimes it is the standout item in what I'm wearing. So I want to talk to you about that. Uh, some non-material things as well. And so girl, we about to get locked and loaded. Go ahead, grab you a beverage. Go ahead and grab you a snack, some mango slices, some apple slices, a juice box. And let's just go ahead and do this thing together, okay? Before I get started though, make sure you are following me all over the internet, including on social media, where you can find me on Instagram and on TikTok. And you can also find me, y'all, in my private community where we are currently doing a 21-day happiness project. I don't want you to miss it. I will link it down below. But in the meantime, let's get started. So let's start friends with jewelry. By the way, I will have time stamps down below. So if there is any category that you are more interested in than others, then make sure you go down there. You can fast forward, you can come back. This is meant to be a resource for you, okay? So make sure you give it a thumbs up so that it is saved in your liked videos. But jewelry is something that I cannot imagine myself living without. And I'm actually kind of surprised when folks said that they're not into jewelry because the way Way that my mind works is like how could you not want a bust down wrist right how could you not just want like a statement ring or earrings the thing that you were known for that when you put it on you're like I'm ready to go <laughs> I'm ready to go like this is I'm ready to see the world because I've put on my dot to dot to dot to dot right that is how I see jewelry and so I am wearing today probably my most used piece of the entire year although it was not purchased last year I definitely wore it the most last year and it is this it is my Dior choker it is not real gold it is brass but I've had no tarnishing no turning no issue with this necklace whatsoever it can be be a bit shorter it's about the longest that it can be right now but if I wanted to I could bring it up so that it would be more of a true choker but I think the reason that I wore this so much this year is not just because I got really into necklaces but also also because I've loved layering it with this piece and that is my silhouette necklace by nature the label a black owned brand and so what you all have seen me do i'm sure in countless videos instagram pictures reels tiktoks etc is to wear this necklace because of where it sits with this chain and i just love the double length of them i'm looking at my viewfinder i love the double length of them and the great part about it as well is that it can very easily be elongated. It's a bad B collabo right there. It's a bad, bad B collabo, the realest to ever do it. The moment when I realized that those two could go together so beautifully, I basically hit the, 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 the mega millions, okay? And I could not get enough of it. For the wrist, I wear every single day without fail. The Cartier Just Unclude. This is the thinner version of the cuff with the diamonds, okay? For my ring, I wear every single day. Do not take this off. My David Yerman uh, ring is part of the Renaissance collection. It can actually be expanded and it has a few diamonds there in the middle. Again, not pieces that I purchased this year, but I definitely know that I wore every single day. For earrings, Natia and Laco. They had me in a chokehold. And they, as a matter of fact, somebody was like, you wear the same jewelry every video. And I'm like, I do. I, do. I don't know. 
I'm not sure why you're saying that as if it is disparaging because I, I, I just know what I like. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> wearing my stuff, I thought was the point. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. Okay, Matia and Lacko had me in a chokehold. The Lion Head Earrings. This brand, I think it is a European brand. Small, they are not sold at a lot of retailers. I found them over on Farfetch. But y'all, when I tell you I have never been disappointed, I am more and more obsessed with the pieces that they are dropping. If you are not into gold, all of my jewelry is gonna be gold by the way in this video. Um, but if you're not into gold, they also have started to make silver. So same thing, we got brass here with probably like a 14 karat gold vermeil. These are, I believe, still in stock. They are the lion head earrings. And I got these because another pair, the post broke when I was traveling and I've not gotten it fixed yet. Y'all remember these? Y'all remember these? I, I'm gonna find some place today, today, okay, to fix it. Ooh. It's just so delicious. A good gold chunky earring is it for me. It is because my hair is so low. It is because I think of the way that I like to do my makeup. When I got a full lash on and a lip, a lash and a lip and a gold chunky earring. Girl, please. Get out of my way. Because <laughs> it's giving world domination. Like that's how I feel about jewelry in general, but especially gold earrings. Let's go back to the wrist though, because I also wanted to bring up another black owned designer. And you all already know who that's gonna be. It's Free Maiden. My friend Rashana makes exceptional gold cuffs. They all have this very like organic vibe to them. Okay, I think they sit so nicely up against that Cartier Just on Clue. And then the necklace, or the, it comes with a necklace, but the bracelet that the tribe always goes up for is this coin pendant. This one is called, I believe, the Amani. I won't put it on, it'll take me too long. But I just love the way that sits there. And I've had this, y'all, for two years. It has one silver chain here, which is such a great kind of pop and design element because as that gold plating on the brass starts to rub a bit, you can see a bit of the silver coming through and it just looks intentional, which I love. So definitely the bust down wrist has been basically all free made in, in my Cartier cuff all year long for 2022. Last pair of earrings have been hoops, especially when I am wearing this necklace as well as the longer nature of the label necklace. Um, these hoops are a pair of gold, chunky, almost brass matte finish ones that I grabbed from Lulu. I have other hoops from Madewell that I also love, but this has pretty much been what I've gone for if I am layering necklaces especially. And let's talk about a pair of earrings that I barely wore at all. These are actually for sale on my Poshmark currently. Uh, now, as you can see today, I'm wearing studs. These are the Idol Diamond Studs in my first home. So maybe I may change my mind if they don't sell. But let me just say, these vintage Chanel's, I just couldn't see it, I couldn't do it. I feel like they needed to be twice the size for me to really, really enjoy them. I did not wear these at all. If you're interested, they are for sale on Poshmark. Now that we are done with jewelry, let's hop over to sunglasses. And as I mentioned, I have things that are the most and the least worn. So we'll get to my first least worn item in this category. Let's start with the most. You already know what it is. Now, let me just say this. These are the Fendi Cat Eye Sunglasses. My friend Brittany had these at the White Toenail Season Retreat and I had to have them. I had to have them. I stalked these things like a thief in the night. When I tell you I had to have them, I, I look like a lost member of a boys to men right now. Anyway. I had to have them. And I, uh, once I realized how much they were and, and the investment that Britt had made, I said, well, God, do I really need them? <laughs> Maybe I don't. Eventually, I pulled the trigger. It's definitely, I think, my most expensive pair of sunglasses in my collection, but the ones that I love the most. 
I have friends, loved ones who tend to think that an oversized sunny looks the best on me. Y'all know how you like with your friends at the mall trying on sunglasses. They always go for the oversized pair. I always go for the cat eye. I do not know why. It is just something that I am drawn to. It is my favorite silhouette. The little bit of gold here with the F on both sides, but they're not too logo driven, has just made these a great everyday pair of sunnies. And then, uh, let's hear it for the buns. Let's hear it for the Amazon Tom Ford dupes. I've worn these so much until they're cricket. They're cricket. It's like they got the gangster lean on the right, girl. When I tell you the best eight dollars, all eight US dollars have been gotten out of these plus some more. <laughs> I just I think it's the color of the lens, it's the way they they fit my face. I just talked about oversized versus um more of a narrow cat eye silhouette. I do like oversized sunnies. I think what this pair has taught me, however, is that it is the lens color. It is the color of the lens that make them so edgy for me. And I cannot wait to invest in either a pair by Gucci or Tom Ford that these are actually a dupe of. Again, Amazon sunnies got so much wear. And unfortunately, what didn't get a lot of wear is this pair of Bottegas that I got at the outlet over the summer. I think, y'all, it's the color. I think if these were more of a tortoise color, I would have worn them nonstop. But they're almost like a rust red. I, I can't call it. I really, really can't. We're back to the cat eye silhouette. Um... They do remind me of the Fendi's, and so the shape is good for me. But, like, again, maybe it is the color. Now, now let me just say, this is a great exercise for me because what it's making me do is say, here are the pieces that I love enough to keep. Let me be disciplined about pulling them out more. I am headed to L.A. in a few days. These are coming with me for sure because I think they're great. I just haven't reached for them. Now let's hop over to skin and body care. I should say that I have a whole body care routine video. Also included a lot of skincare and vlogs during Vlogmas. And so if you want to know more about what products I use on a daily basis, hop over there. But here's the standouts that I definitely know. I just went back for it time and time again all last year. I purchased this probably about five times. It is my favorite body care product hands down it is the one love organics gardenia and tea antioxidant body serum i've shared with you all before that it actually goes on hold on let me see like a that was so awkward body oil but it's best to be used coming out of the shower while your skin is still moist and it also layers really nicely with another product that I received from La Roche. I have gotten this in my PR box I think two or three times. It is hands down my favorite favorite body lotion. I tend to go more for an oil but if I'm using a lotion I'm very very particular. It has to be thick. It has to be re rich. It can't leave like a chalky or a dry feeling on my hands. It, it will send me. I, I can't describe it but I'm very very particular about that. And so this is the Triple Repair Moisturizing Cream. This time of year especially it is a great product. Cannot see my life without it. Okay like never would have made it. It's the, this, is a, this is an ash killer. You need it. And then for a body wash, every single Sephora sale, I picked up the necessary one. And when I was out, I grabbed it off of Amazon. My favorite is the sandal wood. I think it's a great moisturizing body wash and it smells delightful. For my bikini area, because I was very, very consistent with waxing all of 2022, I'm still thinking about laser hair removal. But until then, I wanted to treat that area very kindly. And what I found great results as far as being able to prevent or eliminate ingrown hairs has been having a chemical and not just a manual exfoliator. And so I use the one by Varnish or Vanish, I'm sorry, PFB the Triple Action Skin Lightening and Post Hair Removal Serum. Corrects, heals, and brightens skin. I believe this is glycolic acid based. I don't remember, but it's some form of chemical exfoliant that works really, really well on my skin. 
most used fragrances for sure were these two. One is an oil by Maison Louis Marie number no. four, the Boy de Balancourt. I've shared with you all before that this is the perfect Santal dupe. In fact, I love it even more than Santal because I don't think that um, it is as... What's the word I'm looking for? It seems heavier than Santal and just a tad bit sweeter. And Santal 33 is by La Lavo for folks who don't know. It's a very popular fragrance. But this has my heart and it's like 50 bucks. So it is a quarter of the price of the Santal and it lasts just as long. What I love is to mix this with, and this is gone. <laughs> like it's time for another one. It's to mix it with the Poppy and Barley by Joe Malone. Let me tell you something. Don't mix this unless you're ready for a problem. Everybody coming to the yard. I'm talking about granddaddy, senior citizens, pensions, 401ks, Roth IRAs. I'm talking about dope boys. I'm talking about studs, films. Whatever you want, they're coming. This is a testimony. And my least used fragrances are... They're both by Byretto, which is so strange for me. But it's the Byretto Young Rose. I actually grabbed this in a collaboration with Essence over the summer, I believe. And I'm into rose. Diptyque makes a lovely, lovely, delicious rose candle, rose fragrance. I've gifted that too many times to count. But there's something about this rose that's a little off to me. Now, when I smell it, because scents bring back memories, I think of the summer. Like, I think about traveling. Makes me think of Mexico instantly for some reason. So, I get it. And I understand why I would have gone towards it. It's a light, great floral. But I don't think it's complex enough for me. Which is why, probably after I used it when I was traveling, I didn't pick it up again. And the other one by Byretto that I've had for many, many years is the Ball Day Off Freak. I've had it for so long until it doesn't even have a label. This perfume taught me that I can get tired of fragrances and to not go for the largest size right away. Now, there may be times where you're so absolutely in love with something that you got to do it. But for me, I've had this for like five years. It's dust on the top. I'm just over it. I'm over it. I don't know... Do, do fragrances get old? It doesn't even smell the same anymore. I think it probably was a little too masculine leaning for me, which is why after the first six months or so after I got it, I just stopped reaching for it. It definitely did not get used probably all of 2022. Oh, and one more of my most worn was the Delina body cream. Come up here and get you one of these. <laughs> Listen. First of all, last year was the year that I really learned that if I didn't want to go all out with the expense of a fragrance, to pick up the body wash, the body cream, the hand cream, something to go along with it to give myself a chance to try it out. I did that with the Delina body cream and when I tell you, I got to have it. I have to have the fragrance. It's pricey, but it is worth it. It is such a feminine flirty and seductive fragrance a lot lighter than the Boy de Balancour even the Poppy and Barley is a bit sweeter this is something I think that you would love if you like things that are light floral that have a little hint of spice and seduction so definitely wore this a lot what I tend to do with the hand cream because it is fragrant I'm careful not to layer on too many other scents if I wear anything else at all and I just use it on my hands and I use it on my feet let's now go to shoes shoes is one of my favorite categories in my entire wardrobe I've always been a shoe girl and I have a few that were standouts and I have at least one pair that I'm just like why tell me why what like what was I thinking um let's start with the standouts you already know I want to put these on today mind you I have on jogging pants and a pair of yellow socks I ain't going nowhere <laughs> it's business up top but if I was St. Laurent uh, Fur Mules. 
these sold out. I've not been able to link them for y'all in quite some time. Although I can say that they do still come in, I think, white. And I've seen them in baby blue. They don't have to be Saint Laurent. These didn't have to be Saint Laurent. Did not have to be Saint Laurent. But uh, I've worn them with tights. I've worn them with jeans. I've worn them with dresses. And the fact that they have fur means that I feel like I can really pull them out three seasons out of the year. I don't reach for them during the summer for obvious reasons. Although if I really wanted to, I could. But even during winter, like if I know I'm going to ballet the car, if I'm taking Uber, if I'm just going downstairs for a nice dinner, I'm staying at a restaurant, why wouldn't I put these on? Because the fur, even though they're sandals, still give them winter. I have worn these things between fashion week, traveling, date night, too many times to name. I, I, I've already gotten my cost per wear, I feel like, out of these mules, and it has solidified me as a mule girl. Love these, love these, love these. Speaking of being a mule girl, the next pair most worn are also mules. Yo. Yo. Y'all didn't tell me Jimmy Choo was doing it like this. Now, I know the girls like Jimmy Choo, but here's where they have a fan out of me. If they got one fan, it's me. If they got no fans, I'm dead. They go up to a size 43. And as someone who has a large feet, quote unquote, for a woman, what I appreciate is being able to have room in my shoe. And not that I'm squeezing my foot <laughs> in the biggest size that a brand offers. So a 43 probably fits like a US 12, like women's 12, 11 or 12. I'm a true 10 and a half. And in a heel, I'm gonna go for an 11. So to go for a 43 in these means that my foot stopped probably about right here and they were comfortable. And I was mobbing all throughout New York City with these shoes on to the point where you can see the heel has gotten scuffed up on them. Definitely gonna be pulling these out again sometime soon. I don't know when, but it is such a lovely, lovely pair of shoes. You know, I just had an idea. I know what I want to wear these. Stay tuned, you'll see them soon on the ground. And I've also kind of turned into a hype bay. And in 2022, it was the year of the Jordan 1s for me. I got the orange ones, the orange. I think these are called the orange blossoms. And then I have this pair, which are black and yellow. I forget the actual name of these. As you can see with these, one of my favorite things to do is to alternate the laces. I also have a new pair that I broke out while I was in Miami. I did the same thing. Stay tuned for those. But... Whole hype bay out here, y'all. Uh, I think the great part about the Jordan 1 silhouette is that it is timeless, it's classic, and it is the perfect way to just kind of edge up a really, really fun look. And I have enjoyed wearing these. Hands down, this is my favorite sneaker silhouette. And I also realized that if I have a good old pair of J's, I'm not doing the luxury sneaker thing ever, ever again. And so, great, great shoes all 2022. Least used are my Deaconess Steppers. The Lemon Pepper Deaconess Steppers. I was so into these. I still am. Again, this is about me reminding myself to wear the things that I have not reached for. I know the recipe as to why I have not worn these shoes. I wear so much black. And we already know when you mix black and orange, what is it given? Goons, Goblins, Halloween. And so that keeps me from reaching for these. But you know what? This summer, this spring, we're going to get out here. And I'm going to find a way to wear these because it is a classic silhouette. They need to be like clean, good. A, a suede brush will probably get some of these um, different little spots out. But it's a classic Chanel silhouette. It's a Chanel sling back, as you can see. Uh, I think the mesh makes them edgy. I think the color makes them edgy. It's a classic shoe with a twist, with a twist, which I absolutely, absolutely love. So, got to find a way to do it this year. Me and you must never part. But right now, sadly, they barely got worn. Let's now go to handbags and belts. My last two categories, just so you all know where we are, are going to be clothing and also going to be lifestyle items. So we're about halfway. If you want just a quick time check, if you need to refill your water, your glass, do another pre-roll, whatever it is that makes you happy, okay? Uh, and so 
one of the handbags that I wore a whole whole bunch I mentioned during vlogmas it is my Valentino raffia bag this bag made me excited for this texture it made me excited for raffia in particular I grabbed this um, at TJ Maxx of all places y'all just went in there off the humble and this bag at that time was actually still in stores since then it's been sold out but it was like a thousand dollars less than TJ Maxx I can't make it make sense, but <laughs> I am now a believer of the runway or the luxury section at TJ Maxx. Um, it also has a strap. The strap is not crossbody, it's a shoulder strap, but I love the large studs on it. <clears throat> it is the V logo bag. That's what this logo stands for. Roman stud strap. That's what the larger studs are. I've been tracking on Fashion File ever since I got this. A raffia tote bag also by Valentino that I will probably grab for the summer because this has been clutch for me. Let's hop over now to a least used item that is also on my Poshmark, which is the Brandon Blackwood. Brandon, we love you. We really do. This silhouette was one of my favorites. I believe he still does this in a whole bunch of colorways. But obviously, y'all, baby blue is just not... The color for me <laughs> you know like i tried i really love it with chocolate brown it just did not end up getting worn i think at all outside of maybe a photo shoot or two last year and so if you were interested it is up on poshmark hands down most used i know it fits almost nothing but it is one of my favorite little items to have. It actually replaced my YSL Small Kate. I sold that after I got this. Even though it does not fit my phone, I just think there's something so edgy about this that the second I put it on with the most basic of outfits, it makes it look super interesting and very fashion forward. It also has a gold chain strap that you can wear cross body. But I love to wear it like this, especially for date night. And of course, the Don Dada, <laughs> the Mother Superior. The Supreme Team is going to be led by the franchise player, one known as the Small Loewe Puzzle Bag. If you go back to my video from this time last year, I talked about finally wanting to invest in the puzzle. I was able to do so during my trip to Lisbon. And it has just been a joy to have. I think this sized handbag is probably my sweet spot. It's so easy for day to day. It does come with a crossbody. I am a top handle and a crossbody girl. I love them both equally. And when I can get two for one, we cooking with grease, okay? I kind of tricked it out a little bit with this addition that does not come with the bag. I purchased that. As you can see, it has three charms there, my initial and two that are the anagram. I think the color is amazing. I definitely want it tan and gold. I'm at the point now where the only handbag that you all will probably see me uh, put on my luxury wish list for 2023 is probably going to be something in a pop of color. I have something actually uh, that I just saw this weekend that I may be after. That may be something that's very artistic, but as far as day-to-day -day silhouettes, this handbag let me know that I had reached handbag heaven. Like, It's not a whole lot more that I need. Of course, I have larger black bags in my collection as well. But I think a great black bag, a great tan handbag, which the Loewe is, checks all the boxes for me and it got worn all last year. Very quickly, two belts that I want to mention are my Valentino V logo belt. This one is reversible. Never, ever wear it on this side. I do really wish I would have gotten it in black and tan. But at the time, they did not have the black with the hammered gold hardware with the tan on the back side. And as you can see, the hardware is a bit different. It's almost kind of matte. Um, definitely a great piece in my collection. If I am wearing a belt, trust and believe that it is this one. Unfortunately, and this may change now that I have my Loewe bag, the belt that I did not hardly wear was one that my cousin got me for my birthday. Something is up because the orange shoes came for my birthday too. With my birthday purchases that I wasn't really um, reaching for them as much, which makes me question whether or not I should be buying things just because of a special occasion, right? Because that, I think, may makes me kind of reach for things and get tempted more so than I typically would be. Enough talking, it is the Hermes Kelly belt. It is a beautiful, 
a beautiful, beautiful belt. I've just got to figure out ways to wear this that are going to be great for day to day. But once again, now that I'm seeing these side by side, and see, this is why we do this type of content. Y'all think it's for you, okay? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to pull that out. I feel like I reach more for the belt during spring and summer because I love it with the all-white look. I just think it looks very classy, very chic. But we're going to find a way to make it do what it do also for seasons out of the year, hopefully, in 2023. Now, let's talk about clothes. One of my probably most exciting pieces, I don't know that I could say that it is the most worn but definitely the thing that i have been the most excited to wear you first saw it debuted at fashion week and since then it has just had me in a chokehold and it is this style land sheer top i know on the hanger it looks like nothing so just feast your eyes okay on how i first styled it um i've also worn this with a pair of sneakers and the black and yellow jays i just simply wear it with a strapless bra underneath I wore it when I was in LA with a pair of leather pants and the YSL mink mules. Feathers. And feathers around your neck, girl, that ain't a good old Blanche Devereaux moment. I don't know what to tell you. And, and Blanche was my style icon. Her and Sophia with that handbag. So why Sophia was in the house and she always had that handbag? Sophia, you're not going to work. Why you got that wicker purse? But she's a woman that I modeled myself after because if I can get a bag and some feathers... Yeah, for sure. So we love her. Uh, I got her in a Farfetch collaboration. It probably was a little bit more pricey than I think I would have paid for if it was not a collab. So I'll be transparent with you about that. But it also is a reminder of if you are drawn to something, you're going to get your cost per wear out of it. Because to this day, it still excites me. And I'll be honest with you, I would have paid my hard earned coin for it. And then I got my first long lined blazer. Nothing spectacular to look at on the hanger, but when I tell you I thought I wasn't an oversized blazer person, which I'm not sure that I am, but I think what I do love is at my height at almost six feet tall. Sorry, camera died. <laughs> Told you it was going to be a long one. Uh, something that comes down long that is going to come past my butt or right at my butt. I just think that that helps to be able to play with proportions. And so I've loved really wearing this with shorts. I've worn it with a pair of pants and I'm going to show you very soon. Uh, it has just been the gift that keeps on giving. And I love to cape my blazers, but the length of this one is one that I also like to put my arms in. And H&M, I think, does great wardrobe essentials like blazers. This was 50 bucks and definitely my most worn blazer of the year. All right, we're going to toggle back and forth here. So let's talk about least worn for sure. I don't know, friends. I don't know. Make it make sense for me. Not the lack that I have not worn it. But make the reason that I purchased it make sense. Because you all know I do not do a lot of color. And why I thought that I was going to wear a ankle length orange skirt which by the way was a tremendous investment because it is Christopher John Rogers. I don't know. This is probably the thing that frustrates me the most because is Christopher John Rogers, which is, which is a black luxury designer. And I do love his pieces. I think they are art. So therefore I don't want to get, a, get rid of it, but also I don't wear it. So what is we going to do? Okay, it's not on my Poshmark closet yet. It is absolutely beautiful. I am planning like a mini sabbatical, um, somewhere warm. So maybe I will pull it out then and wear it day to day in the most glorious of ways. Um, but I also think there's something about this silhouette that I'm not drawn to. Y'all, I don't know. Tell me. Tell me. M make it make sense. You all give me great style advice all the time in the comments. I need your help with the Christopher John Rogers orange skirt because it did not get worn. But what did get worn are these. So much so I do not have them. They are in the wash currently. <laughs> it is my Margella MM6 jeans with the slits on the side. I have been coveting these jeans for a while. All the fashion girls had them. I was like, do I want them? Do I want them? They're $600. I don't know. Do I want them? And I wanted them. Mm hmm because when you know you know and uh, day to day that is probably my favorite pair of jeans they're high-waisted they go with every single thing they almost have like a barrel or a balloon fit to them they're long 
I think it's a new and interesting denim silhouette. You have to peel those jeans off of me. I'm just going to be honest, which I don't have a problem with because of the price. And so we definitely got our cost per wear out of those. Another most worn piece, which was actually also in my luxury wishlist video of 2022, are the Dries Van Noten Sheer Pants. I've worn these as everything from a swimsuit cover up. I've worn them with bloomers underneath them. I've worn them with tights, with, with um, short shorts, in a myriad of ways. And I think much like the style land top with the feathers across the top, as someone who loves neutrals, when I can have a neutral silhouette that it can be worn in a million ways but I can have it in an interesting texture or in um, a way that looks very fashion forward or edgy that's what I'm gonna go for that's what makes my heart skip a beat and I think to have a pair of sheer pants with velvet stripes and they're super super long which is not great for some people but perfect for me because I can wear these with the heel and the pant will still cover the heel they're so long Love them. The most recent way I wore these that I thought was very fun was just with a vintage like Allen Iverson tee, which I've seen me wear before. The Mink Mules, a pair of very short bike shorts. And then I took the next item and caped it across my shoulders. And I was out on U Street, down at the bar, serving the girls. Serving the girls. Okay. It's the pants. And the Peace Day Resistance for 2022. Can we have a little commotion for the Bottega, the Pat LaBelle shoulder, the Bankhead bounce getter? Bam. It's going to have to be that Bottega moto jacket. Okay. At this point, the jacket puts itself on my shoulders. And I only wear it like this. Unless I'm in the airport, I need my hands. Because that's how a moto jacket in my mind is supposed to be worn. It's supposed to be chic. It's supposed to be edgy. It gives you some street style. Um, if you are someone whose style pillar is elevated simplicity, which I talk about in my latest ebook, having a good moto jacket it, it's the one and not the two. Because it's going to take those pieces that may seem very conservative and give them a lot of interest and intention. And so it doesn't even matter. I don't care where I've been going to the Trader Joe's, to the post office, to the bar, to the restaurant, to the, the foreign destination. This jacket has been with me and has been my favorite piece, hands down, in my wardrobe. Um, Bottega, I know, I know this jacket retail was like five bands. Like, that's egregious. However, I was able to get it half off during um, the sale. Luxury brands do do sales, pull some other strings, you know what I'm saying, made it work. And I just feel like this was the best money that I have spent on a luxury item in my collection in a long time because it's a piece of outerwear and I'm just obsessed with it. And that is it for clothing. I feel like I had a really banner year as far as clothing is concerned. I really do because I set the intention to invest in more um, designer ready to wear, understanding that that is the meat and potatoes of design houses. And I wanted to kind of get away from just only focusing on or investing in things like handbags and shoes. No shade, no tea. Love both, as you can see from what I've said. It has been my, my most and my least worn. However, I think the stellar pieces very often of a designer tend to be their ready to wear. And I know that it's someone who worked in luxury retail. So had a banner year there and I'm very excited. Um, so now let's hop over to a lifestyle pieces. Most worn or most used, least worn, least used. You already know it is the Louis Vuitton MM Agenda A5 size. I created two videos about this agenda this year, maybe three. Um, definitely go and take a look at those if you're interested in planning and productivity. It's something that is just my sweet spot. I am an attorney by training and so I have like pretty disciplined productivity practices, especially now as a solopreneur that's incredibly important. And this year I think what took my agenda up a notch is that I invested for the entire year in the cloth and paper monthly subscription box and it just made me so excited to get my subscription every month and to also put my items my inserts and other items into rotation I used this every single day it's to the point now where where I'm traveling I mean it's thick right it's bulky and I'm someone that loves to be as minimal as possible when I'm packing but I have to have this I don't have another option it's just 
is what it is. So I have been really excited um, to use it. It makes me feel like a boss, like I'm really getting things done. And sometimes, <laughs> it's funny someone pointed this out to me, I have more fun and more intention around the actual planning than I do using the plans that I make. Like I'll have set out my entire week on a Sunday, that's when I typically use this. I'll have my stickers, I'll have, you know, my different page flags, etc. All from Cloth and Paper, by the way. It's a black owned own, own brand, which I will link down below. And then we'll miss all my meetings because I didn't even look at the damn thing. So the joy sometimes is just in the planning itself and not using it, just so you know. However, definitely uh, most used item of 2022. The other item is my Nespresso machine, which my mom got me for my birthday. If you watch my vlogs, you know I typically start them off in the morning with a cup of uh, coffee with Nespresso. I just feel like it has transformed my morning ritual. It has also made me really not want coffee anywhere else, which is great. Nespresso machines are not cheap, the pods are not cheap, but they're still less expensive than going out for coffee day to day and I'm probably not even using this machine to its fullest capacity. I have the milk frother as well but I know there is a a deep hole you can go down on between TikTok and YouTube all about these like specialty Nespresso recipes that I'm looking forward to uh, but for now just give me like either the caramel or the vanilla flavored pod. Give me my so delicious coconut milk creamer. No sugar nothing else added and it is a great way to start my morning. Another most used lifestyle item is therapy. I have used a lot, lot of therapy this year. And I'm actually going to refer you all to my Joy and Grief episode on my podcast, Justice, with my best friend Margo, who you all saw during Vlogmas last. Um, I did an intensive program, outpatient program, where I met with a group of individuals and mental health specialists for three days a week, three hours a day very intense, extremely. And I'm someone who has done one-on-one -on -one talk therapy for many, many years. But to be in that environment in a group setting, I feel like changed my life. And I've said before, but I'll say again, a very important uh, quote from one of my best friends, uh, Joel, who, who's a poet. So he, he speaks in this way sometimes. He told me, he said, Shy, you go through the pain alone and you heal in community. And I, I can't think of anything truer um, because I needed to see my reflection. I needed to know that I was not alone. And there was something about saying out loud in front of people some of my negative beliefs and have people repeat it back to me. It was so many chains and trauma bonds that just back to back to back were broken that I feel like it was really one of the greatest gifts that I have given myself in my adult life. Like outside of, you know, being cancer free, outside of focusing on my joy and my personal development and growth, which brought me to being a solopreneur. Outside of those types of things, I think the top three <laughs> has to be on the list, this therapeutic program. I highly recommend it if you are someone who feels like you were just kind of stuck uh, in life, if you are stuck in grief, if you are stuck as far as your wellness and well-being is concerned. It is great, great, great. Now, the modality or the medium is often known in two, two different ways. Um, it can be the PHP program, partial hospitalization program, although you're not hospitalized, or an ILP program. And I forget what that one stands for. But the whole goal of it is to be a bridge between individual, maybe like once a week, once a month talk therapy, um, and then to be the bridge between that and when people do unfortunately sometimes or fortunately have to be put in an inpatient facility. And so a lot of my group mates were people who had similar life experiences as me, people who are about the same age as me. And when I tell you, like I walked in there, felt like I found my people, I found my tribe. That's what I did. And I will forever love my uh, therapists and my group mates, people who I may never see again because of that. Because I mean, the healing and the breakthrough were just bar none and I'm so grateful. And my last most used item of 2022 was my passport. Girl, I was outside. Was I outside or was I outside? If you're not new around here, 
I was outside. International trips alone. Um, I went to Mexico. Uh, that was, I went to Tulum earlier in the year for my birthday. Over the summer, I went to Mexico City. And then I went to Lisbon, Portugal. Domestic travel, I was everywhere. I was everywhere between Miami. Um, I was in LA. I'm getting ready to go to LA again. I was in Boston a lot, taping the podcast. I've just been all over the country. Been to Vermont for the first time or the second time. Um, beautiful, beautiful place to just relax and release. And... Um, what I have realized, oh, Fashion Week twice. What I have realized is that I have got to make a greater intention for my travel because I feel so alive when I'm doing it. Um, it happens, obviously, but it felt this year like it was a bit haphazard. Like I was like, God, I'm back on a plane, you know? And I don't want it to be that way. I, I, I want to be excited for every single trip. I have a client in Pittsburgh. I go there quite often. And I want to be excited for every single trip, whether it's for work or it's for play. And I think that just takes greater planning and intentionality. However, Passport got some miles, frequent flyer miles. Like, we, we were doing the thing all year long it got to the point where i just woke up one day and was like i want to go to miami and literally just went to miami and just got a hotel and just sat by the pool all day and worked and day drank like that's the soft life in my opinion <laughs> that is the the thing that i work the hardest for it's not the stuff it is the ability to be healthy and to be whole and to pour and invest in myself. And I hope you are making plans to do the same thing for yourself for 2023. Um, if you haven't figured out how to do so yet, I will tell you that I have a 21 Day Happiness Project, which is a great place to start with exploring your joy. Uh, it's a toolkit that helps you to figure out for three weeks, how can you invest in yourself in a way that matters the most? I'll link it down below. All right, good people. So that is the that on that. I am sure that I have left something out. But at this point, this is probably an hour and a half long. And so we just gonna have to wrap this thing up. If I miss anything, let me know down below. Oh, you know, see, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. The Norma Kamali coat. This one. You know, y'all know this thing has been stuck to my body, okay? Tens across the board. Definitely something that actually makes me a little excited for winter because it is my favorite garment. It is so cozy, so comfortable. It is so warm. It is all the way down to my ankles at six feet tall. And Norma Kamali just does her daggone thing. Could not wrap it up without shouting that out. And with that said, though, we are going to come to a close. I hope you all have enjoyed today's video. Let me know down below what was your most and least used item whether luxury whether fashion or not for 2022 we would love to know make sure you are subscribed to my channel give the video a big thumbs up and i will see you good people across the internet peace homies <laughs>